I've been using this latest iPad mini, the seventh gen, the A17 iPad, whatever you want to call it. I've been using it for a little over a month now, and I've got quite a lot to say about it. In fact, this year has seen quite a lot of firsts for me. It was only this year I started using iPads. In the summer, I bought my first ever iPad Pro, and then a few months later, this, the iPad mini. So where does it fit into my iPad family? There are those people that are quick to come down on the new iPad mini and say, well, nothing's really changed. Of course, you're going to get those people saying that. But then again, you could argue and say, did much need to change? There's that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, my name's David, and I make videos about Apple Gear, all Apple Gear, every single week here on the channel, simply because I sit using Apple Gear every week, and I love talking to you about it. Aesthetically, it is very true to say, not a lot has changed about the outside of this new iPad mini. In fact, I think the only change I can really see is that it says iPad mini there, which I like. It didn't use it before it just said iPad, but they're not consistent with that across their range. The MacBook Pro says MacBook Pro underneath, but if you saw my video last week about the Mac minis, there's no mention there if you're using the M4 Pro Mac mini or just the Mac mini. So I'd like to see that carried across the range. But before moving on, just talking about design a little bit longer of the new iPad mini, it's that design on the front. Now, hmm, it's got that kind of squared off boxy iPhone look, iPad look that we're very used to now, but it's got fairly thick bezels still. And it would have been nice, particularly on this smaller form factor, if we just had a more edge to edge design to give that screen as much real estate as possible. It's tiny, it doesn't really offend, it doesn't get in the way when you're using it, you forget about them. I'm not a big bezels person, but it's purely from a design. When you compare it to the iPhone, it would have looked nicer if we just had slimmer bezels around the whole thing. So where does this iPad mini fit into my lineup? Where does it fit into my workflow? Of the two iPads on my desk, the iPad Pro and the iPad mini, I find myself more and more often reaching for the iPad mini. It just feels more of a general use kind of a tablet. When I reach for the iPad Pro, it's for very specific cases and very specific reasons, and they're normally more heavy or creative tasks. I always reach for the iPad Pro to write on. That keyboard, ridiculously expensive as it is, is just an absolute joy to write on. But if you ask me day to day, which iPad do I reach for more? It's this all day long, it's the iPad mini. But whether it's for content consumption, browsing or taking notes, yes, physical handwritten notes using the Apple Pencil, it's the iPad mini that I reach for. The thing with the iPad, it does a few things really, really well. And that's part of its beauty. It doesn't try to pretend to be what it's not. And I find it, for me at least, it sits perfectly between reaching for the iPhone and the iPad Pro. It just is a lovely device to use. You get the choice of four colors this year, space gray, blue, purple, which is what I went for, and starlight. There are smart folio cases that more or less match the iPad colors as well. By the way, if you're wondering, if you have cases from the iPad 6 mini, it will fit. The magnets are in exactly the same position, so you might be able to save yourself a few pounds there. And thankfully this year, thankfully Apple did away with 64 gigs as being the minimum starting storage option. Now it starts at 128 and there was no price increase for that, but you can also choose to get it in a 256 or 512 gig configuration as well. There is one of those oddities about the iPad mini though. It's the smallest iPad, obviously, in their lineup, but it's not the cheapest. If you want the cheapest iPad, that's the iPad 10th gen, which you can still get for £329, I think. But of course, what you're paying for with the iPad mini is its portability. And Apple like to charge you for that USP of being so portable and so small and just so easy to carry around with you. Now, the camera position on the iPad mini hasn't moved. I'm going to defend Apple there. I can kind of understand why. On the iPad Pro, the iPad Air, absolutely all day long, it needs to be on the long edge, on the landscape edge. But with this iPad, most of its life, it lives in portrait orientation. And if you're making a lot of FaceTime calls, I think it's still perfectly comfortable just to hold it and make those calls. I think it was one of those cases where Apple were going to be doomed no matter which way they went, it was wrong, but I can kind of defend them and see why they left the camera there on this particular model of iPad. I don't think it was just them being lazy. By the way, if you're enjoying the content I'm making it every week, then there's one simple way you can help this channel grow, and that is by subscribing. Turn on notifications as well. Most of you aren't turning on notifications, and that's super important. That way, the moment I upload a video, you will know about it, and you can get involved with this great community that we're building here. So if you're enjoying this content, don't forget notifications, subscribe, maybe even share it. It just makes a huge, huge difference to the channel and helping it to grow into 2025. I'm still after those 15,000 subs, so if you haven't subbed yet, help me out. It means an awful lot to me. The display is more or less a rinse and repeat from the Mini 6, meaning it's still the same LCD 
8.3 inch P3 wide color true tone display. And while you do get an anti-reflective coating on this iPad mini, one thing that they haven't improved upon is the max brightness. It's still only 500 nits of max brightness. Now to put that into context, the iPhone 16s have got a thousand nits of max brightness. These devices, the iPad mini, the iPhones are clearly devices that are going to be used on the move, away from home, in daylight, on the train, planes, sitting in the park, coffee shops, whatever. They're going to be used in bright environments. They should have, they really should have increased that 500 nits of max brightness. It would have just made this thing so much more comfortable to use in those kind of environments. We didn't get OLED, and I totally understand why we didn't get an OLED display. That is a pro feature. I'm fine with that, absolutely fine with that. But what I think is indefensible is the fact that we've got a new tablet released in 2024 with a 60 hertz refresh rate panel on it. That should not have happened. Most Android phones now come out with 120 hertz refresh rate screens, and we should be getting that on iPads. None of Apple's devices are bargain basement. None are cheap. We pay good money. We pay a premium price. We're happy to do that because of the design, because of their usability, but also there should be some core features that we should be expecting in 2024, 2025, and surely a 120 hertz refresh rate panel should be one of those features that we take as a given by now. And Face ID is another one of those basics that I think we should take for granted that we haven't got, and I'll come back to that a little bit later on. And of course, I can't talk about a display on an iPad mini without touching on at least the phenomenon that has become known as jelly scrolling. Now, it hasn't really offended me, but it is a thing. I know it's a thing. For the uninitiated, jelly scrolling is when the text appears to wave from left to right, you scroll up and down with the iPad in portrait mode. It occurs because LCDs refresh line by line, starting from the top line. And with the iPad mini only refreshing at 60 hertz, this trait becomes a lot more obvious. Most iPad owners, I think it's fair to say, probably own another iPad, an iPad Pro or an iPad Air. And coming from those displays to this, that illusion at least of jelly scrolling, is an issue. Now, while, as I say, it's not been ruinous to me, it's not made me unhappy with using an iPad mini, it is a thing. And Apple could easily have sidestepped this just by giving us ProMotion. I mentioned a moment ago that we pay good money for our Apple devices. The iPad mini starts at £500, and for that, I think it's fair to expect ProMotion. I mentioned Face ID a moment ago, that's something else we should have got on this iPad mini. Don't get me wrong, I am really enjoying, really enjoying using this iPad mini, I genuinely am. But there's a few things that would have made it that little bit better. And Face ID was one of them. Apple cannot hide behind the fact of saying Face ID is for pro devices. It's not, it's on all of the iPhone 16s and they should have included it on this iPad mini. The seventh gen iPad mini also supports two Apple pencils, the Pencil Pro at 129 pounds or the USB-C pencil, which is a little bit cheaper at 79 pounds. Although the Apple Pencil Pro does cost 50 pounds more, if you're only going to buy the Apple Pencil once, I'd say it's possibly worth considering spending that little bit extra and getting a really premium device. With the Apple Pencil Pro, you get the barrel roll feature, which lets you rotate the barrel to change change the orientation of the shape pen and brush tools, hover, squeeze, and double tap to quickly switch between tools. And the haptic feedback on here is really, really good as well. It's just strong enough. All in all, I think it's worth spending that little bit extra just to get those functions. Oh, and it's also now recognized on Find My as well. And probably with a pencil, having Find My isn't a bad idea. On the positive side though, you can connect your iPad mini to a TV or an external display using a USB-C to HDMI cable. Adapters that support HDMI 2.0 can output video at 4K at resolutions of up to 60 hertz. Speaking of that USB-C port, that got improved this year as well. It's now quicker, it's twice as quick. The USB-C port on the iPad mini or the A17 Pro iPad supports USB 3.1 transfer speeds with up to 10 gigabits per second. So if you regularly transfer files between your iPad onto an SSD, then that extra speed could be something that's good for you. You also get Wi-Fi 6E. So if your router at home supports it, you get the latest Wi-Fi compatibility as well. And if you were looking around frantically on your iPad mini, you're wondering where the SIM tray's gone, it's gone. It's just gone. They're all eSIMs now. All iPad minis are eSIM only. And the battery life is one of those things I haven't really noticed. I'm guessing if I haven't really noticed it, that must mean it's okay. Because you tend to do lighter tasks on here anyway, you're not doing really heavy intensive kind of work on the iPad mini, you're not putting on the demands of it too much. So I generally get around about a day and a half, maybe two days between charge, and charging I found from zero to full takes around about 90 minutes. Of course, the iPad mini didn't get the M series chip, but it did get the A17 Pro chip from last year's iPhones. And something came to mind actually, while I was making this video, is that if you want to get into Apple intelligence, the iPad mini is the cheapest route for you to get into Apple intelligence. And Apple intelligence at the moment is rolling out into more and more regions. So that's gonna become more and more a thing over the next year. All iPads feel fast and snappy. 
And this one certainly doesn't disappoint. Even if I'm using CapCut or Lightroom or Photoshop to do some editing, it never seems to struggle. It just responds to everything. The A17 Pro has a 30% faster CPU and a 25% faster GPU. All you need to know is it feels quick. It comes with a 16 core neural engine, a six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores and a five core GPU. Although the rollout of Apple Intelligence has been a little bit messy, it's fair to say, we are now seeing some of the more useful features coming to our devices. I've just put the latest OS on the iPad mini and I've got writing tools, image playgrounds, cleanup feature in a Photos app, which is actually pretty good, and also a prettier looking Siri, if not necessarily a more intelligent Siri. But one thing is for sure, now that Apple has pulled the cord, we're gonna be getting more and more Apple intelligence features coming to our devices quicker and quicker and quicker. And they're serious about it as well. I was reading in The Verge this week that apparently Apple are thinking of developing their own LLM Siri to compete with ChatGPT. Of course, never too far away from any video you make about an iPad is multitasking. Now, I don't use Stage Manager. I'm not a fan of it. I don't use it on my iPad Pro, and it just wouldn't work on the smaller real estate of an iPad mini. It's not what it's designed for, but you do get split view, and split view with this smaller design works really, really well. I'm happy with what I can do. I can have a couple of things open on the screen, and if I want to make notes and look at Safari, I can do just that. I mentioned early on that part of the charm of the iPad is that it doesn't try to be something it's not. It's no pretense to it. It just does a few things really, really well. Now, while the iPad Air and the iPad Pro have direct competitors from Samsung and the like, there is no direct competitor to the iPad mini. Yes, some of the foldables open up into a similar size, but their phones, you've got a crease down it, they're not as pretty to use. The iPad mini is in a class of its own, it really is. And when I first started to use the iPad Pro during the summer, I remember saying then that it felt kind of a more relaxed way of working than working on a Mac. I'd still be productive on the iPad Pro, but it felt not quite as office -fied. Well, the iPad mini takes that to a whole nother level. Once I've got the iPad mini out, I kind of know I'm not doing anything that's really heavily serious and intensive. It's just a great way to kick back and work, whether it's here in the studio looking at Apple News, or whether it's at home watching something on Apple TV. This thing just feels totally different from any other device that I use and you know what it puts a smile on my face and that surely has got to be worth something and you know what I'd almost argue that it's a good job we didn't get an M series chip in here and make it too grown up or connected on the back to give it a keyboard would you really want to have a keyboard that's that small to type on it's not something that would really interest me but the iPad is fun to use I've said the iPad mini is really fun to use but it's not all just about fun Apple sees who's buying this they know the people that are buying this and apparently it's really popular with some certain groups of professionals pilots seem to love it Doctors, nurses seem to love it. It all goes to show that this iPad mini is actually a serious play in the corporate world as well. It's not just a pretty face. It can actually do a serious day's work. That is where the portability and durability and size wins out. And you know what gives me some hope? The fact that Apple didn't decide to ignore the iPad mini. Now, we might never get an iPad mini Pro that some people have been saying they want with an OLED display. I don't think that's where the iPad mini sits. I really don't. But the fact that they've given it Apple intelligence or made it Apple intelligence ready, I think means that Apple sees this iPad mini being part of the future and being part of the iPad family for a good while to come. And you know what? That makes me really happy. So who is this 7th gen iPad mini for? Well, if you've got a 5th gen or earlier, no brainer, go and buy one of these, you'll be delighted, it's fantastic. If you've got the 6th gen iPad mini, then things are a little bit tougher. Maybe you've loved it and used it so much that the battery life is starting to suffer. It's not what it was before. Well, then you've got two routes you can go. You can go and buy an iPad mini 7 and you'll love it. Or you could look to make a saving. I went on the Apple refurbished store today and I saw a model with 256 gigs of storage for 459 pounds or 64 gigs of storage for 379 pounds. But just remember, they are not Apple intelligence ready. So if Apple intelligence is something you want to use now or in the future, bear that in mind before parting with your cash. Now at 500 pounds, they're not cheap. That's why we should have got promotion. That's why we should have got face ID. But you know what? That's the only two things it's lacking and they're not huge. Other than that, this thing puts a smile on my face every time I use it. It's a great device. It's a fantastic tablet to use. And when you think about it, the word mini has been pretty kind to Apple this year, hasn't it? One way and another. If you want to see what my thoughts were when I first picked this iPad mini up, there's a video on screen for you right now.